have something so exciting to share with you this week. Some of you who know my background, you've read my bio, you know that I have a degree in French, je parle français, <laughs> and I have always wondered what in the world does God want me to do with this French degree? I had no idea, do I teach it? What do I do with this? And it's just recently that the Lord has really revealed to me, little by little, just my love and my heart to reach France and French-speaking people, Canada, all these different areas where there's French-speaking people. But we have the opportunity now to translate a book that I just wrote into French. And it's all about how valuable you are to God. It's just a little mini book that we're translating. It's going to be titled, Vous avez de valeur à Dieu. You're valuable to God. And I am so excited about it because it's going to be just seed that we are going to distribute all over Paris. And I want to say thank you to those friends and partners who are helping me to do this. It's a dream come true. And you know, sometimes you just have to step out and do it. Even though you don't have all the answers, you just do it. But you know, that is my passion, is to teach people how valuable they are to God. I guess, you know, a lot of times what you're passionate about is really a representation of what you used to go through, what you used to struggle with. And because I didn't feel valuable and I felt worthless, man, I am so determined to teach girls, teach women, men, whoever it is, how valuable they are to God. You know, a couple of years ago, my family and I were flying on this trip for our vacation and uh, me and my daughter are sitting beside each other and then my husband is in the middle next to all these people and there was a young teenage girl sitting next to Rodney. She was probably like 18 years old and very overweight and no makeup and you know, her face had broken out and um, she just... Oh man, she just looked miserable, real sloppy dressed. And I'm not making fun of her or putting her down in any way. It made me mad at the devil. She's hiding herself with her bangs, her hair's just covering her face. She's eating everything, asking for more food, brought food on the plane. And to me, I mean, you could just tell she had no value for herself and for her life and no vision, no vision for her life. And not realizing that, you know, God has put her here and you here for a limited time on earth to do everything you can with your life and to waste it listening to Satan's lies about how unvaluable you are, how worthless you are, how your life has no meaning, that makes me mad. It makes me mad at the devil. I'm not mad at you. And I'm not mad at that girl. I'm mad at the devil. And I thought, you know, I wish I could just spend some time with that girl. I wanted to give her some CDs and give her a book on how valuable she is. I wanted to say, read this, listen to this, and tell me if this doesn't start to change the way you see yourself. Because I know the word works. And you know, I, I shared last week that I read this phrase that said, the problem that infuriates you the most is the problem that God has assigned you to solve. Well, I hate insecurities, I hate inferiorities, I hate timidity and passivity and just wasting life away. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. And that's what I want to share with you is, you know, when you look throughout the Bible, the way Jesus brought healing to hurting people was he taught them the word. He knew that if he could get the word on the inside of you, it would change the way you see yourself. It would change the way you talk about yourself. It would change your whole dreams and your goals and your vision for life. So that's what I want to do is teach the word. But also just realizing that God's word is what brings comfort. <clears throat> you know, you may be saying, well, Terry, I am one of those girls or those guys who's insecure, who's inferior, who feels I don't have a big vision for my life then you're exactly who God's looking for. You're exactly who I want to reach and minister to. And God's word was written for you. It was written to build you up, to bring hope to you, to bring comfort and encouragement to you. It's not written for everybody else but you. And the thing is, you have to get to a place where you pick up that word and apply it to your life and believe this is God's word for me. Now listen to this. This is from Psalms Now, a different translation of Psalms written like for today's type of language. And this is chapters 17 and 18. And I just want you to see how the word of God can bring healing no matter what you're going through. It says, I cry out to you out of desperation. Help me feel good about myself and about my role in your service. Reveal yourself in some special way this night that I may rest in joy and in peace. It's no wonder that I love you, God. 
You have granted me a security that I could never find among the things of this world. God will grant you a security that no clothing <laughs> can give you, that no cosmetic surgery can give you, that no boyfriend or husband or wife can give you. Then it says, the traumatic experiences of this life cannot destroy me. Now that's something I want you to say out of your mouth. The traumatic experiences of this life cannot destroy me. Then it goes on to say, you are never out of reach, but you're ever aware of my problems and conflicts. And this is the God who is concerned about me. He reaches into my distraught life to heal my wounds. He encompasses me with eternal love. He surrounds me with strength and clothes me with his grace. He now gives meaning to my life. Now, do you see how God's word can bring hope to you in your darkest hours? I mean, when Satan is doing his best to distract you, to destroy you, to cause you to want to give up on whatever it is that you're believing for, but you get the word out and you just start reading it. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had so many times in my life where I've heard a preacher say, go to the word, go to the word, find a scripture that deals with what you're going through and just read it. And seriously, look how thick the Bible is. <laughs> and I would just be like, okay, I'm insecure. I have fear, lots of fears. How in the world do I just find scriptures? And I would just open the Bible up and like this, this is Leviticus 4 chapter, yeah, verse 9. Okay, listen to this. I would read stuff like this. And the two kidneys and the fat is upon them and the call above the liver, which is the kidneys and was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice <laughs> by peace offerings. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering. And I would read it and I'd just close it and be like, okay, I'm feeling more secure now. <laughs> I don't have a spirit of fear now. That didn't make any sense to me. But when you find something that applies to you, something from the word that deals with security, deals with fears, deals with feeling better about yourself, about what God's called you to do, man, you want to tell everybody. And that's what I want you to do is find something. I encourage you to get Psalms now because it's all, it's just the whole book of Psalms written in today's language. And all it does is bring hope, encouragement, strength, confidence, and it makes you think you're not that crazy. <laughs> when you listen to what David went through and the things he wrote, it will sound like your personal journal probably. It does for me. But I want to encourage you to do something this month to read the Word. Don't just say, yeah, I know I need to read the Word. Yeah, I'll do it someday. Read the book of Psalms. Read it in whatever translation you have or get this translation and read it out loud as if you are speaking it from your heart to God. And I'm believing that God is going to give you that same security that He's given me.